Traveling all around the world for training and competition is common practice for many elite athletes. Many recreational athletes also make plans for a big event far away each year. We know that long distance travel can lead to jet lag, but are there ways that we can minimize its negative effects on our performance? Travel is great, but traveling can be a nightmare. Besides hauling yourself around airports, there is heavily disrupted sleep patterns. The noise inside in a plane cabin, the cramped seating, the reduced air pressure, the dry air, combined with landing many time zones away, can severely disrupt sleep for multiple days around the actual flight as the body adjusts its internal clocks and rhythms. If you have the financial means, one study has demonstrated that sleep duration and quality is greatly improved when flying business class compared to economy. In today's episode, we'll see what are other ways that athletes might be able to use to maintain optimal performance when traveling. A 2021 study by Fowler and colleagues studied whether a detailed program of sleep planning and sleep hygiene combined with light therapy in the days after traveling can improve some common markers of athletic strength and performance. This was tested on 20 male athletes returning home from Qatar to Australia following a training camp, which consisted of three separate flights on a return trip. 10 of the athletes were in the control group that received no sleep planning or light therapy. The other 10 athletes ate at the airport before departure of the red-eye flights and avoided eating meals during the flight. They were also provided sleep masks, earplugs, and noise-canceling headphones. And they also anchored their sleep time to their departure city, so in Qatar time. In other words, they got on the plane and spent as much time prioritizing sleep as possible. Upon return to Australia, all athletes slept in their own homes. However, the experimental group had a systematic plan of choosing natural outdoor light exposure or blue light therapy to help anchor their internal clock to the arrival city over four days. This schematic outlines baseline testing on day 23 of the overall training camp in Qatar, the travel day on day 25, followed by four days where the experimental group used light avoidance and light exposure at specific times along with maintaining good sleep hygiene habits. You can see how each day there was three hours of light avoidance followed by three hours of light exposure and this whole pattern was shifted forward two hours a day to accelerate adjustment back to Australia time. Again, the control group had no sleep hygiene instructions or planned light exposure. Upon return, testing was performed each of the four days at both 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Australia time to simulate common training or competition times. The results of the intervention were promising. Sleep duration was greater during the flight in the experimental group, as well as both sleep duration and quality post-flight. Performance in jumping, 5 meter and 20 meter sprinting times, and also mood and motivation were higher in the experimental group. This was true not only the day after return, but also largely the case throughout the four days of testing post-flight. Overall, this suggests that with careful sleep management and planning, athletes can minimize performance impairment from travel-induced fatigue and shifts in internal rhythm from long-haul travel. This will be especially important for athletes traveling to Tokyo for the Olympic Games in the summer of 2021. I hope that you've enjoyed this look into the fascinating world of environmental physiology. I'm Dr. Stephen Chung, and I run the Environmental Ergonomics Lab in the Department of Kinesiology at Brock University in Canada. We post new short videos on different aspects of environmental physiology every Wednesday. Thanks for watching. See you next time.